What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of a pay-as-you-go Moto G7 Optimo Max. I've actually had a lot of requests to cover this phone on my channel since it was released in 2019, but recently I did a video on the Moto E6. It's another pay-as-you-go phone, 50 bucks, and emulation performance on that is not bad for a new $50 phone. Now, if you're not familiar with these prepaid or pay-as-you-go phones, basically, you buy the phone outright anywhere from $50 to $300, depending on the phone you get, and you pay for the cellular service per month. I mean, you can cancel it any time. It's a no-contract phone, so if you just want two months of service, you can go ahead and pay for it, get two months of service, and you won't be charged any late fees or anything like that. But what I've been doing is just buying these and kind of using them on Wi-Fi and just seeing how they perform with emulation. Now this one here is from Straight Talk. It's the Moto G7 Optimo Max. This was recently on sale for $99 at my local Walmart. Regular price on this is around $129, so it really wasn't that much of a price difference. But I wanted to pick one of these up because I've had a lot of people asking about this device and how it handles emulation. So as for controlling the emulators, I usually use a telescopic controller like the Sataki 7007 or even the newer iPega 9167. Now personally, I don't really like the look of this iPega, but I do like the performance and feel. But in order to get your games up and running, you don't even need a controller. I mean, you could use the on-screen touch controls in the emulators if you want to, or you can just buy a little adapter for an existing controller that you own. The Xbox One controller or the PS4 controller. They connect over Bluetooth and they work quite well with these Android devices. So I'll just give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we have the Snapdragon 632. This is an octa-core CPU at 1.8 GHz. For the GPU, we have the Arduino 506. And since this is the Optimo Max, we have 3 gigs of RAM. But if you get the original Optimo for a bit cheaper, it's got 2 gigs of RAM. Either way, performance should be the same with emulation. 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card support up to 256 gigabytes, a 6.2 inch IPS 1570 by 720 display, which looks really great for a phone at this price, a pretty big 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and you can get all day battery life out of this phone. It's running Android 9.0. We also have dual band AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. So overall, for a new device, if you can pick this up for that $99 price tag, I'd say it's well worth it. Now in this video, I'm not reviewing it as an everyday driver, but I gotta say, with specs like this and a great price, this might be the best bet if you're looking for a pay-as-you-go phone. So we're definitely not working with top-of-the-line specs, a Snapdragon 855 or even the new 865, but the price reflects that. And I think this could turn out to be an awesome little dedicated emulation device. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some testing. So first up, we have some Dreamcast emulation using the standalone ReDream emulator. I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960. This is Sonic Adventure 2. With each one of these games you're about to see, I will have the emulator listed if I'm upscaled and the name of the game. Dreamcast runs like a treat on this device.
N64 emulation on these lower end devices is always hit or miss, but with the G7 using MuPin plus FZ, I was able to upscale to 960 by 720 in every game that I tested, and it ran great. I mean, this device is handling N64 really well. The G7 handled PSP quite well using PPSSPP. A lot of the games that I tested, I was able to go to 2x and even 3x resolution. But with a lower end device like this, you will run into games that aren't playable. Well, they just won't hit full speed. Like the God of War games, Killzone, Midnight Club, it doesn't matter, you can use OpenGL or Vulkan and you just can't get full speed. Now that doesn't mean that this device can't handle PSP because a majority of the library will be playable. Even if you have to drop it down to 1x resolution with certain games, you'll get full speed out of a lot of the PSP games available. So going into this emulator, I was pretty sure we weren't going to get full speed, but I know I'd have people asking, so I wanted to show it off. I tested OpenGL, Vulkan, all the little hacks that I know, but the CPU just isn't powerful enough to push GameCube at full speed. Now you might run into one or two games that originally ran at 30 FPS that run pretty good on here, but I wouldn't buy this phone specifically for GameCube emulation.
So even though Sega Saturn isn't at full speed, I was actually quite surprised that it was able to push it this hard. This is the Yoba Sanshiro core inside of RetroArch. Most of the lower end phones that I test this on get around 20 to 30 FPS, but we're up in the 40 to 50 range and even some games were running at 60 FPS. So the G7 is kind of hit or miss with Sega Saturn emulation. And finally, we have some Atomus Wave and Naomi emulation. Very surprising to see it running at full speed here. I'm using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch. I also tested a couple 3D games and they ran great, but one game that always gives me trouble on low-end devices is a game called Border Down. But the G7 does handle that game quite well, and you'll see it in just a second, but I didn't even have to lower the resolution to get it to run at full speed. So for this video, I was really interested in the higher end stuff. If you want to go with the lower end stuff, NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, 32X, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, and even the Nintendo DS, it's all going to run at full speed on a device like this. I was more worried about the higher end stuff, Dreamcast, PSP, N64, and so on and so on. So the Moto G7 does handle emulation quite well. I love the screen, the form factor of the phone is pretty great, and with that 5000 milliamp hour battery, you can pretty much game all day. Like I mentioned, regular price on this phone is $129.99, but they do go on sale all the time for $99 on Straight Talk from Walmart, so definitely keep an eye out if you're looking for an inexpensive secondary emulation device. I think this would be well worth it. And another thing that the G7 does quite well is native Android gaming. If you want to do PUBG or Call of Duty Mobile, it's going to run it at full speed. You might have to drop the resolution down a little bit, but it is fully playable on the G7. And not to mention cloud gaming or streaming. Since this has AC Wi-Fi built in, it works with GeForce Now really well, Project X Cloud, and even if you want to stream from your own home PC using the Steam link, this phone will do it, and it does it quite well. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Ever since I made my Moto E6 video on emulation, I had a lot of people asking about the G7, so I figured I'd go ahead and get a video made. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.